we, uh, we understand from the studies of people like Norman, uh, 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 Noam Chomsky and others that, for instance, we have a, uh, a humans are hardwired for language, in the case of Chomsky. It's in our genes. But there's been a tendency to attribute a lot of characteristics, a lot of traces of our personality, of the way we are, to evolution. Do you think people are going overboard with that? It's always been a problem, this swinging backwards and forwards in, in this particular argument. Uh, it tends to be correlated with one's p position on the political spectrum, left to right. Uh, Chomsky is an interesting case because he is a man of the left, very definitely, uh, in politics, a very highly effective spokesman for the left in America. Um, and also in, in linguistics, however, he is associated with the view that, as you say, language acquisition is hardwired in our genes. It's important not to misunderstand that. Of course, it doesn't mean that we are born knowing a language. Everybody knows that's not true. But we are born with neural machinery, which is hardwired, eager to learn language, has the capacity to construct grammar. And it's very easy for it to construct grammar when, when the child hears grammatical language uh, spoken. The um, chimpanzee studies that have been done, teaching chimpanzees things like American Sign Language, the language of the deaf, uh, it's controversial. Nobody denies that these chimpanzees can learn a very large vocabulary of a couple of hundred words from the sign language uh, dictionary, but most linguists do not accept that these chimpanzees are capable of the sort of hierarchical syntax the recursive syntax which uh, Chomsky has uncovered, Chomsky and others have uncovered in human language. It seems that the human brain is uniquely hardwired to do syntax, to generate it and to understand it and to read it. Um, so, How about other traces of personality? Well, um, the evidence you can get on other traces of personality are, for example, twin studies. You know that monozygotic twins, identical twins that are formed by the splitting of a fertilized egg. So they have all the same genes. If you compare how alike twins are, identical twins are, and compare that with how alike non-identical twins are, non-dizygotic twins are, then you can get a measure for the importance of genes in determining variation. So if you take something like eye color, if you know the eye color of one twin, you absolutely know the eye color of the other twin if they're monozygotic. But if they're dizygotic, you don't. They might have opposite eye, eye colors. So with eye color, the heritability is one. The, you can obtain a figure for heritability. This is, the, uh, this is a number that, that tells you how predictable the one twin is, if you know what the, other, what the other twin is, that would be one way to put it. And things like intelligence, as measured by various IQ metrics, tend to have a fairly high heritability, but it isn't one. So if you know the IQ of one twin, if they're identical twins, you've got a pretty good idea that the other one will be the same, but it won't be exactly the same. Um, and things like musical ability, mathematical ability, uh, sexual orientation. People have looked at the resemblance between monozygotic twins compared to dizygotic twins with respect to each of these characteristics and obtained a heritability score somewhere between one, which means absolute heritability, and zero, which means that if you know the characteristics of one twin, it tells you absolutely nothing about the characteristics of the other twin. So the truth is somewhere in between naught and one, and it varies between naught and one in different, um, different characteristics. Uh, what's wrong is to think that because something has a degree of statistical genetic determination, that therefore it's somehow any more irrevocable and unchangeable than any other kind of determination. Um, if, for example, um, you found that there are genes for 
uh, religious belief. If there's some, if one twin is religious, the other one tends to be religious. There is some evidence for that. Um, it could very well be that that is an important effect, but that environment could be even more determinate. That if uh, children are exposed to nuns in their early childhood, it could be even harder to shake it off later than if, than if, it, if you have genes that, that make, you, make you religious. So there's nothing magical, there's nothing super deterministic about genes.